This is J Man Time, and today I have another video related to combat vessels of the First World War. And in today's video, we're going to be going over destroyers and torpedo craft of the Ottoman Navy during the First World War, 1914 through 1918. Now, during the First World War, the Navy of the Ottoman Empire fielded over 20 destroyers, torpedo boats, and torpedo gunboats, sometimes referred to as torpedo cruisers by many Westerners and by the Ottomans themselves. But most of these ships have largely been forgotten by naval historians. So in this video, we're going to go over the various destroyers, torpedo boats, and torpedo gunboats of the Ottoman Navy, their names, their histories, and their fates in the post-war era. So let's start on this video. And the first class of vessel we're going to go over is the Burke Ibsen class. Now the Burke Ibsen class was a was one of the first class of torpedo boats or large torpedo boats ordered by the Ottoman Navy from Germany in the early 1890s. The ships were actually ordered in 1886, but they, they were not completed until 1891-1894. This class consisted of two vessels, the Burke Ibsen and her sister ship, the Tyre. These vessels were constructed originally in Germany by the German Germanian Werf Ship Company, but were shipped to Turkey in pieces and were later assembled at the Tarsan Emir shipyard in Turkey between 1891 and 1894. The Berg Ibsen class was actually based on the German G1 class of torpedo boats completed in 1885-1886 for the Imperial German Navy. The vessels had a displacement of 230 tons and were armed at first with 5 to 6 37mm guns and two 428mm torpedo tubes. They had no armor and their speed was 21 knots or 38.8 kilometers per hour or 24.1 miles per hour and they had a crew of 50. Later on in 1912, following the first Balkan War, their armaments were upgraded with two additional 47mm German or French made main guns. So by World War I, they now had two 47mm guns, five to six 37mm guns, plus the two 428mm torpedo tubes. Now these vessels have served in a number of conflicts, first the Greco-Turkish War of 1897 and during the Italian-Turkish War of 1911, the First and Second Balkan Wars between 1912 and 1913, and they served all the way through World War I and the Turkish War of Independence. Now these ships were actually based at first at Salonik, which is now known as Thessaloniki or Laniki in Macedonia. But after the Turkish defeat during the First Balkan War, they were later stationed at Istanbul and in the Turkish Bosphorus Strait. During World War I, they also acted as convoy escorts as they were some of the largest torpedo boats in the Ottoman Navy. Keep in mind, most Ottoman torpedo boats only had a displacement of between 87 and 150 tons, but these two vessels, the Berg Ibsen and Tayyar, had a displacement of 230 tons, which is about 30 to 40 percent of the displacement of the average Ottoman destroyer. These vessels also served again during World War I and later the Turkish War of Independence, only to be decommissioned in the late 1920s, where they were sold for scrap in 1932, thus ending the history of the Burke Ibsen class of torpedo boats, sometimes called torpedo boat destroyers of the Ottoman Navy of the First World War. The next class of vessel on the list is the Hamadi or Hamadai class of torpedo boats that were constructed between 1901 and 1902. This class consisted originally of two vessels, the Hamadi or Hamadai and the Abul Masid, which was later renamed the Yunus in 1908. But the Hamadi was actually sunk in 1911 during the Italo-Turkish War in a major engagement with the Italian Navy. So by World War I, that left only the Abu Masid or the Yunus left representing this class. The vessels had a displacement of 145 tons. Their main armament was one 37mm Hotchkiss main gun and two 450mm torpedo tubes. They had no armor and their speed was 26 knots or 48.1 kilometers per hour or 29.9 miles per hour and they had a crew of 30. By World War I, 
only the Abu Masid slash Yunus was still in service as again her sister ship was sunk during the Italo-Turkish War of 1911. Now during the First World War, the Abu Masid slash Yunus was based in the port of Istanbul and she actually took part in the Dardanelles campaign along with a number of other Ottoman torpedo boats and destroyers. She actually managed to survive World War I. She actually managed to survive World War I and served again during the Turkish War of Independence between 1920 and 1922. Later on, she served in the newly formed Independent Turkish Navy from 1922 until she was decommissioned in 1926, but was recommissioned again as a dispatch boat, only to be decommissioned a second time in 1929. Later on in 1935, the Abu Basid slash Yunus was sold for scrap, thus ending the history of the Hamidi class of Ottoman torpedo boats that were constructed in 1902. Now these two vessels were actually constructed in Italy, in Asaldo, Italy located in Ganoia, and they were sold to the Ottoman Navy in 1902, and Hamidi was actually sunk by the Italian Navy, so the Italians basically sank a ship that they themselves had constructed for the Ottoman Navy, thus ending the history of the Hamidi class of torpedo boats of 1902. The next class of Ottoman torpedo boat are the Akisir class of torpedo boats that were constructed in 1904. These vessels were also constructed by the Alsaldo manufacturing plant located in Italy between 1904 and they were later sold to the Ottoman Navy in the same year of 1904. The class consisted of two vessels, the Akisar and her sister ship the Al Pagat. And these two vessels had a displacement of 165 tons. Their main armament during the First World War were two 37mm Hotchkiss guns and their secondary armament were two twin 450mm torpedo tubes. They had no armor and their speed was 24 knots or 44.4 kilometers per hour or 27.6 miles per hour and they had a crew of 30. Now despite it being a class of two vessels, only one was still in service during World War I and that was the Akisar herself. Her sister ship, the Al Pagat, was later sunk in September of 1912 during the First Balkan War, leaving only the Akisar to represent this class. By the eve of World War I, the Akisar was still in service with the Ottoman Navy. The Akisar served in the Ottoman Navy during World War I, just like all other surviving torpedo boats, and she also served during the from 1920 until 1923. Later on, she was decommissioned temporarily, but was recommissioned again in the 1920s, serving all the way up until the year of 1930. Later on, she was decommissioned between 1930 and 1935, and was sold for scrap the same year in the same year of 1935, thus ending the history of the Akhisar class that were constructed in Italy in 1904. The next class of Ottoman torpedo boats serving in the First World War was the Antalya class of torpedo boats that were constructed in Italy between the years of 1904 and 1906. These vessels had a displacement of 165 tons and they were armed with two 37mm Hotchkiss main guns and two twin 450mm torpedo tubes. They had no armor and they had the same speed as the Akisar class at 26 knots or 48.1 one kilometers per hour or 29.9 miles per hour and they had a crew of 30. Now the class consisted originally of of seven vessels the Antalya, the Urfa, the Ankara, the Talkad, the Drek, the Kutaya and the Mosul. These vessels were all constructed by the Ansaldo Shipbuilding Company in Italy between 1904 and 1906 and they were transferred to the Ottoman Navy in the same year of 1906. Now many of these vessels were actually sunk or scuttled during the Italo-Turkish War, the Italian-Turkish War of 1911 and during the First Balkan War of 1912. That includes the Antalya herself which was sunk in the Italo-Turkish War which was sunk in 1911 during the Italian-Turkish War. Her sister ship, the Urfa, which sank in a storm in 1908. Her sister ship, Ankara, which sank during the First Balkan War in February of 1912. And her sister ship, the, the Tokad, which was sunk during the Italo-Turkish War in 1911. So by World War I, you only had three surviving vessels, the Drek, the Kutya, and the Mosul, which were still in service in 1914 at the start of World War I. They served as torpedo boats and convoy escorts for the Ottoman Navy, but during World War I, the Kutya, the Kutya 
herself was later sunk in September of 1916. By the start of the Turkish War of Independence, there were only two vessels left, the Drak and the Mosul. And these two vessels served until 1924, where Drak was decommissioned and later converted into a barge in 1926, her fate ultimately being unknown as there is no more history on the Ottoman torpedo boat slash Turkish torpedo boat slash barge, the former torpedo boat Drak. Her sister ship Mosul was decommissioned in 1929 and was sold for scrap in 1936. Thus ending the history of the Antalya class of Ottoman torpedo boats that served in World War I but also served in the Italo Turkish War and in the Balkan Wars and in the Turkish War of Independence between 1911 and 1922-1923. And then there is the last class of torpedo boats, of purpose-built torpedo boats constructed for the Ottoman Navy, and that is the Demir Hissar class of torpedo boats that were constructed in France between the years of 1906 and 1907. This class consisted of four vessels, the Demir Hissar herself, the Sultan Hissar, the Serif Hissar, and the Hamabad which were all constructed in France by the French Schneider Company in France between 1906 and 1907 and they were all transferred to the Ottoman Navy in the same year of 1907. Now these ships were the first line of torpedo boats to be called up by the Ottoman Navy at the beginning of World War I. These vessels had a displacement of between 97 and 101 tons. Their main armament were two 37mm Hotchkiss main guns and two twin 450mm torpedo tubes. They had no armor and their speed was 26 knots or 48.1 kilometers per hour or 29.9 miles per hour and they had a crew of 23. Now these vessels also served as frontline torpedo boats during the First World War. And during the First World War, two of these vessels were actually sunk or wrecked. That includes the lead ship, the Demisar herself, which was wrecked in April of 1915, and her sister ship, the Hamabad, which was actually sunk in combat in 1917 by the Russian Navy in the Black Sea region. By the end of World War I, they left only the Sultan Hissar and Severe Hissar left as the only two ships representing this class, representing this class of torpedo boats during the Turkish War of Independence between 1920 and 1922-1923. The last two vessels were decommissioned in the year of 1928 after serving a few years in the newly formed independent Turkish Navy before being sold for scrap in the year of 1935, thus ending the history of the Demir Hissar class of torpedo boats that were constructed in France between 1906 and 1907. Now we move on to the Ottoman destroyers or the Ottoman destroyers of the First World War. Now technically some consider the Burk Ifsen class to be a kind of precursor to the Ottoman destroyers as those are sometimes considered torpedo boat destroyers which is a type of vessel that existed before purpose-built destroyers were before purpose-built destroyers entered service in the late 1880s. Now the first class of purpose-built destroyers to serve in the Ottoman Navy were the Samsung class of destroyers also constructed in France between the years of 1906 and 1907 and these were also constructed in France by the Garadi company based in France between 1906 and delivered to the Ottoman Navy in 1907. The class consisted of four vessels, the Samsung herself, the Yar Hissar, the Tassaz, and the Basra. These vessels being delivered to the Ottoman Navy again in 1907. These destroyers had a displacement of 284 tons. Their main armament was one 65mm Hotchkiss Model 1902 main gun and two 47mm Hotchkiss Model 1902 secondary guns. They were also armed with two twin 450mm torpedo tubes and they had a speed of 28 knots or 51.8 kilometers per hour or 32.2 miles per hour in a crew of 23. Now during World War one, one of these vessels, the Yar Hissar, was actually sunk in the year of 1915, becoming the only casualty of World War I for this class of destroyer. The remaining vessels acted as convoy escorts, um, destroyers, torpedo boats, and mine layers, and mine sweepers for the Ottoman Navy in the Dardanelles, Mediterranean region, and the Black Sea region. After World War I, they would also serve during the Turkish War of Independence from 1920 to 1923. 1922 and 1923 and they would serve again in the newly formed independent Turkish Navy 
all the way up until the year of 1932. In 1932, they were decommissioned and were laid up for more than a decade, for more than a decade before finally being sold for scrap at the beginning of the Cold War in 1949. The Samsung class of, of destroyer is also one of the longest serving vessels in the Ottoman Navy or the Turkish Navy, being a service for both the Ottoman Navy and surviving all the way up until the Cold War. So we're talking over 40 years of combat service for the Ottoman and later Turkish navies, the Samsung class of destroyers from 1906-1907. And that brings us to the next class of Ottoman destroyers, the most successful and the most famous class of Ottoman destroyers to serve in the Ottoman Navy during the First World War were the Mubinet Emili class of destroyers, which were actually German S-165 class destroyers that were constructed in Elbing, Germany between the years of 1908 and 1910, being delivered to the Ottoman Navy at the end of the year of 1910. Now this class consisted of four vessels, the Mubinet Emili, the Yadagir Emilet, the Numan Hemiyet, and the, and the Geyret Ed Vitanie which were all constructed by the German, which were all constructed by the German Shishao Ship Manufacturing Company but, and based in Elbing, Germany, again between 1908 and 1910. These vessels had a displacement of 665 tons to 765 tons fully loaded. Their main armament was one German-made 75mm 7.7cm Krupp Schnell Cannon L50-01 main guns and two 57mm Nordenfeld Schnell Cannon L50 secondary main guns. They also had three twin 450mm torpedo tubes. They had no armor and their speed was 32 knots or 59.2 kilometers per hour or 36.8 miles per hour and they had a crew of 90. Now during World War One, these were the most successful class of Ottoman destroyer slash torpedo firing vessels being mostly used as convoy escorts but also as offensive vessels especially during the Gallipoli campaign or the Dardanelles campaign or the Kanakul campaign if you're Turkish um, of 1915 of the year of 1915 and also in the Black Sea in 1916 in the Ottoman Black Sea offensive between 1914 actually and 1916. Now, during the Gallipoli campaign of 1916, the Ottoman destroyer Mubinet Emili herself actually sank the British pre-dreadnought battleship HMS Goliath with several torpedoes and a few rounds from her 75mm guns. She actually had two 75mm guns, not one as I mentioned earlier. This was the first time during the war that an Ottoman destroyer or torpedo boat actually managed to sink a major allied capital ship. The HMS Goliath along with HMS Ocean and HMS Triumph would all be sunk in the same time period of May of 1915 which led to the Allies eventually abandoning their invasion of Turkey in 1915 during the Gallipoli slash Kanakold campaign or Dardanelles campaign. So the Mubinet Emili actually participated in the very battle that actually decided the fate of Turkey at least in that year of 1915 during the First World War. Now later on during World War I, the Mubinet Emili class of destroyers were temporarily decommissioned at the end of the Ottoman involvement in World War I in late 1918, and all four vessels were later stationed in the Golden Horn during the Allied occupation of Turkey from 1919 until 1920 before the start of the Turkish War of Independence. Afterwards, they were incorporated into the post-war Turkish Navy during the after the end of the Turkish War of Independence. They would serve in the post-war, newly formed, independent Turkish Navy from the years of 1920 through 1953. So we're talking many, many decades into the future. In fact, these vessels survived not only World War I and the Turkish War of Independence, they also survived World War II and were still in service during the early part of the Cold War until they were finally decommissioned and sold for scrap in the year of 1953, thus ending the history of the Mubinet Emili class of Ottoman destroyers slash torpedo boats of the First World War. And now let's move on to some of the larger torpedo 
firing vessels or torpedo armed vessels of the Ottoman Navy. Now we're going to talk about the Ottoman torpedo gunboats and the torpedo cruisers which were technically destroyers in a sense as they were much larger than the last few classes of ships that had gone over on this list but they were roughly the same size as an allied destroyer or large torpedo boat having a displacement of between 700 and 900 tons. So the first class of uh, torpedo gunboats is the Peleng Idaria class of torpedo gunboats which were constructed between 1887 and 1891 and entering service in the Ottoman Navy in the same year of 1891. Now this class consisted of two vessels, the Peleng Idaria and her sister ship the Nemet, which were constructed by the Germania Werf manufacturing plant in Kiel, Germany between the years of 1887 and launched in 1891 and were later transferred to the Ottoman Navy in 1891. These two torpedo gunboats had a displacement of 755 tons to 900 tons fully loaded. Their main armament were two 105mm Krupp Schnell Cannon L-35 main guns slash C-91 main guns. They also were later fitted before World War I with two additional 120mm Krupp Schnell Cannon L-35 main guns. Their secondary armament was six 47mm Nordenfeld Schnell Cannon L-40 secondary main guns. And they also had five 37mm revolving dual purpose auto cannons plus three 356 millimeter torpedo tubes these vessels had no armor and their speed was 18 knots or 33.3 kilometers per hour or 20 miles per hour and they had a crew of 80. now by world war one only one vessel the Palang Idaria herself was still in service. Her sister ship, the Nemet, was later decommissioned and sold for scrap in the year of 1909. At the beginning of World War I, Peleng Idaria was one of the largest torpedo firing craft in the Ottoman Navy in 1914 at the start of hostilities and she actually managed to survive at least the first year of the war. But later on, on May the 23rd, 1915, the Peleng Idaria herself was later sunk by Allied torpedoes, thus ending the history of the Peleng Idaria class of torpedo gunboats. The ships only served for about a year into World World War One before the only surviving member herself was later torpedoed and sunk in combat. On May the 23rd of 1915, thus ending the history of the Peleng Idaria class of Ottoman torpedo gunboats that were constructed in Germany between 1887 and 1891. And then that brings us to the final class of torpedo firing vessels for the Ottoman Navy. And these are the most modern and the largest torpedo firing vessels to serve in the Ottoman Navy during the First World War. And that is the Pig is Sevik class of torpedo gunboats, sometimes referred to as torpedo cruisers, that served in the Ottoman Navy from 1907 until the 1950s actually. And this class consisted of two vessels, the Pik Isevik and the Berk Isevket, which were constructed by the German Germania Werf manufacturing plant located in Kiel, Germany between the years of 1906 and 1907 and were delivered to the Ottoman Navy in the same year of 1907. These vessels had a displacement of between 775 tons to 900 tons maximum displacement. They were armed with four 105mm German-made Schnell Cannon L-40 main guns or Krupp Schnell Cannon L-40 main guns. They were also fitted with six 57mm Nordenfeld Schnell Cannon L-30 secondary main guns and two 37mm revolving cannons along with three 14-inch 356mm torpedo tubes. They had no armor or at least the armor thickness was not mentioned and they had a speed of 21 knots or 39 kilometers per hour or 24 miles per hour and they had a crew of 105 altogether. Now at the beginning of World War I these vessels mostly acted as convoy escorts. In fact they would remain convoy escorts throughout the whole of World War I for the Ottoman Navy escorting cargo ships and merchant vessels 
for both the Ottoman Navy and for the navies of the other central powers, namely Germany, Austria-Hungary, and Bulgaria. These vessels operated both in the Mediterranean region, but also operated in the Black Sea region and in the Ottoman Sea of Marmara, being transported back and forth via the Bosphorus Strait. Now, in the year of 1915, the Berg Isepkit was actually damaged by a Russian naval mine and she was temporarily out of service before being repaired later on at the end of that year. And her sister ship, the Pig Isepkit, was later torpedoed by the British submarine HMS E-11, the same vessel that sank the Palang Edaria in the same year of 1915. Both ships were in a state of disrepair until they were finally repaired and put back into service in 1917. After World War I, both vessels were decommissioned temporarily and were stored in Istanbul before they were eventually taken over by the Turkish nationalists during the Turkish War of Independence starting in 1920 and lasting until 1922, 1923. They would survive the Turkish War of Independence and would later serve in the independent Turkish Navy from 1923 until 1953. So an additional 20 years and during that time they were upgraded, repaired and modernized for the modern Turkish Navy during the interwar years and during the Second World War and again during the early part of the Cold War before both vessels, the Pig Isefget and the Berk Isefget were both decommissioned between the years of 1953 and 1955 and were later sold for scrap in the same year of 1955, thus ending the history of the Pig Isefget class of torpedo gunboats, sometimes considered torpedo cruisers depending on who you ask. And that's basically it. These were all of the Ottoman torpedo boats, destroyers, and other large torpedo firing vessels that served in the Ottoman Navy during the First World War of 1914 to 1915, with many of these vessels surviving the Turkish War of Independence and during the post-war independent Turkish Navy from 1923 until the 1940s and 50s in some cases, all the way up until the Cold War basically. These vessels here were some of the longest serving vessels in Turkish history, many of these vessels serving for anywhere from 30 to 40 years or 50 years in some cases in the case of the Berk Isefke class and these vessels formed the backbone of the Ottoman Navy as the Ottoman Navy was largely made of of old ironclads and pre-dreadnought battleships that were too slow and too old to keep up with these smaller, newer vessels, for example the Mubinit and Mili class of destroyers, which were some of the more modern ships in the Ottoman Navy. So which of these classes were your favorite? If you ask me, my favorite torpedo boat class would be the would be the Burke Ifsen class, as that is one of the hardest to research class for this video, as there's almost no photographic evidence of these vessels at all. Uh, my favorite destroyer is obviously the Mubinet and Mili class, as it is the most successful class of Ottoman destroyer and the only Ottoman destroyers to actually sink an Allied capital ship, the British battleship pre-dreadnought battleship HMS Goliath, and I would say the Peak is Sebgit class would be my favorite of the gunboats as they were still in service all the way up until the beginning half of the Cold War. Some of the longest serving warships in the Ottoman Navy and in Turkish naval history altogether. So what do you all think of these vessels? The Turkish torpedo boats or Ottoman torpedo boats, destroyers and gunboats, torpedo gunboats of the Ottoman Navy of the First World War. Please tell me in the comment section below and until next time, this was j -Man Time Signing off. Audio,